In the last lecture, we talked about mean recurrence time at steady states uh, in an ergodic Markov chain. Now, we will talk about the related computation. This is the expected first passage time to a state, starting from any other state. So, take a Markov chain, like this one in the example that we discussed in the previous lecture. Uh, suppose we are uh, wondering about how many transitions it will take until we visit state 1 for the first time, uh, starting from somewhere else, or maybe 1 itself. So, suppose uh, Ti is defined as the expected time until visiting state 1, starting from state i. Can we write a set of equations for this? It will be very easy. It's similar to the computation, remember, of the mean recurrence time uh, that we did in the previous lecture. So, uh, clearly, t1 is 0, right? If we are in 0, and the number of transitions until uh, we uh, visit is 0. Uh, but from any other state, we need to make one transition, right? At least for, from state 2, for example, we need to make one transition first. And then, depending on where we go, uh, we'll make further transitions. So in that example, uh, 1 plus from 2, we can go to uh, and directly uh, to 1 uh, with probability 1 half. In that case, the further number of transitions is going to be t1, which is 0. Um, or from 2, we can go back to 2, and the further number of transitions uh, until uh, we reach 1 is going to be t2 in expectation, of course. So we can write these equations. In fact, um, first of all, let me write the general set of equations in this case. Um, t sub j is equal to 1 plus summation, uh, I'm sorry, t sub i, t sub i, summation over all j, p i j t j. This is the set of equations that we write to compute the expected first passage time. So let's continue and apply this to our example. Mm, T3, in our example, is equal to, uh, you tell me, 1 plus 1 over 2t1, well that's 0, plus 1 over 2t2. Anything else? No. Similarly, this term here is 0, right? So from this equation, I find that t2 is 2. From this equation, I find that T3 combined with this, T3 is also equal to 2. Moreover, how about T4 and T5? I can write an equation for T4 that is 1 plus 1 half t2 plus 1 half t5. And for t5, it's similar. t5 is 1 plus 1 half t3 plus 1 half t4. From these, I find that t4 and t5 are both equal to 4. Okay, now that I've computed the expected first passage times, can I maybe use this as an alternative way of finding the mean recurrence time for state 1? 
That is uh, what we are going to handle in part B of this problem. So essentially this was part A of the problem in your lecture notes. And part B says, use these to compute M1, the mean recurrence time for uh, state 1. But first of all, again, let's write a general expression. Well, M1 is the expected number of transitions from 1 back to 1. Right? So clearly, this is going to be at least 1. And depending on where we go, we will return to 1. So maybe we can express M1 in terms of the TIs. So M1 is going to be 1 plus summation P1JTJ. Uh, How about that? summed over all j. Because from 1, I'll make a transition. If I go somewhere else other than j, uh, uh, other than 1, I will, uh, then I'm dealing with the uh, first uh, passage time until 1, right? OK, then uh, if no one has a problem with this, then let's just fill in the numbers. M1 is equal to 1 plus uh, P11T1, right? This includes 1 itself. J can be 1 itself. Plus P13 um, um, T3. In our example, that is it. Because from 1, I can only go to 1 and 3. This is 0 by definition, so that's gone. So 1 plus 1 half T3. T3 we had earlier found as 2. So 2. Any questions? Okay, uh, so essentially that completes our discussion of Markov chains. The next topic is going to be exponential random variables.